Christmas time is almost here, and that means Metro Manila Film Festival is also near. However, not everyone will trip to the cinemas because half of their lineup is commercialized, as some of them would find other forms of diversion on how to spend their happiness in their pockets, aka the 13th month pay. Despite this, the film festival naturally serves as a barrier, creating a seasonal cycle for regular com local commercialized films for the year from January 8th until Christmas Eve. Sounds great, right? But can we imagine if we can narrow it further down into the calendar for major film studios similar to those in America? Movie marquees change every week to accommodate fresh theatrical releases. Unlike theirs, where they change every Friday, in which determines the box office weekend, we change it every Wednesday, except during Holy Week, where Black Saturday is the release date when major malls normally resume operation. Thus, we have 50 weeks for general release to begin with. However, major Hollywood studios do not release their magnum opuses in certain months. These are the so-called dump months, because they fear of insufficient box office receipts and critical review figures. The first part is due to the cutting back of their expenses from the preceding holidays, the harsh winter weather, Super Bowl, and the award season. While the second part is due to young potential moviegoers are heading back to school. Imagine if the Philippines applied this concept, where would it be placed? Aside from January for the IMFF repercussion, we might as well include June for school openings, leaving 4 weeks each. We'll draw down to 42. Hence, there will be two ordinary film periods, the shorter one in time for Valentine's Day until Mother's Day, and a longer one from July until Christmas Eve with one in August, set aside for the new and successful Pistana Pelicula Filipino, remaining with 41. However, if the Film Development Council of the Philippines heeded the popular calls of extension for PPP to match those with MMFF, we might finally end up with 40 available weeks for ordinary films. In terms of PR, most regular masterpieces would normally publicize up to its third week. 40 by 3 and disregard the decimals, a film studio could optimize their annual portfolio up to 13 films a year. Exactly the number Star Cinema released their regular films back in 2016. So, who would benefit from the movie calendar reform? The primary beneficiary will be the film company's producers. Firstly, the screenwriters would be given much time to brainstorm and to store creative juices before pitching them all into the script. Secondly, actors, particularly those with active television roles, would have a very concentrated work-life balance. Thirdly, the post-production staff will have more time to create and to enhance their masterpieces quality before general release. The other beneficiary would be the major film awards organizations. The proposed movie calendar reform would aid them in creating the criteria for eligibility and selecting its winners. Of course, for the pros, there will always be cons. Film production companies would lose revenue and patronage base. Its workforce can be demotivated as breaks might give them too much time to procrastinate. Last but certainly not the least is the stakeholders, cinema owners and moviegoers, where aside from getting a culture shock, they tend to lose revenue and patience respectively. So, where do you stand? Do you agree with the movie calendar reform? Do you have modifications you want to hear and to expect? Let us know in the comments below and have a peaceful Christmas.